Welcome to Doc's Office Hours. It's December the 6th. Uh, remember, we abide by the Jenkins Code of Conduct. So let's... Agenda topics I had. I've got some news that I wanted to share. Uh, weekly change log, PR review, modernizing a plugin blog post. Uh, Meg, any topics you want to add? Diraj, uh, any topics you want to add? No, I'm good. Okay. From my side as well, uh, these looks good. All right. Okay. So I am, Meg, you had asked before, hey, can we link to subsections inside of the plugin site? Yes. And Gavin Mogan has made it happen. Oh, bless him. So notice what I just did. I clicked the uh -huh. hyperlink that has an embedded ID on the end of the hyperlink. Uh -huh. And it jumped all the way to the page. And the hover here shows me the, the link for it so I can get to it. He has, he has done it, and it now works at least in all the cases that I've tested. So oh, good. this plugin works. This plugin used to work anyway, and it still does. Oh, does it? Oh, no, no, no. Uh-oh. Oh dear. Okay, well that's oh that's a serious problem because the navigation is now broken on this one. I'll have oh. to. Okay, time for a bug report. That's okay. So, uh, bug interesting. So I click that, but it doesn't have. But it does have the hover over it. Interesting. Wait a second. That's really strange because. Change log does have it. So that hover works, right? Yes, but but it's reworked the um, the links from the a doc with plugin dash content dash prefix. But ah. of course, the ASCII doctor, the a, a doc generated hyperlinks internally don't have that. Okay, so I'll just, I've got to report a bug. That's, well, thank you for letting me uh -huh. test it live in front of everybody. And now let's, let's go report the issue. And if I remember, there is an improve this page, help us improve this page. Okay, there we go. No, that's not the one I want. I want, Okay, so he doesn't have a link to the plugins. Oh, here we go, report a problem. There we go, and this is a bug. Okay, so whoops, I don't know. No, that's reporting a problem against the, the plugin. That is not what we want. Okay, so we will have to go here. And all right, so new issue, uh, a doc um, contents, table of contents, links. Sorry, do you mind if I do this now while we're on it? Links. Not at all. Broken in a doc pages on plugin site. Um, uh, okay, so plugins that use the use a doc format and uh, embed a table of content, a computed table of contents like the Git plugin, no longer resolve internal links to sections of the document. When clicking the entries in the table of contents. Okay, so okay. Um, oops. For example, the configuration, the enabling JGit link.
in the table of contents. and uses the enabling dash j git identify ID, but the ID on the section heading is actually, okay, now, There we go. Okay. The links worked previously, but don't work any longer. The docs can be converted to mark down if needed, but ADOC was easier for table of contents initially. Okay, issue submitted. So I have a question. Yes. So how, how did this used to work previously with or without the plugin content prefix? It worked without it because if we okay. if we open this page on the Git, mm -hmm. actually let's this is this is fun because it's impressive how much Gavin has done and how wonderful the work is he does. Here is the GitHub page. Now, if I open the README here, notice that it's got the table of contents items and these hyperlinks work. Mm -hmm. Even yes. though when we look at the source code. There is no table of contents. All there is is this table of contents macro that causes a doc to generate the table of contents for it. So, so that's this magic here of this talk macro is the thing that I, I liked about a doc that until GitHub did their extensions wasn't available with GitHub. It is now available with GitHub. I've just haven't made any transition to switch this from ADOC to, to Markdown. Did that address your question, Diraj? Yes. Yes, sure. Interesting. Yeah, so so we've reported it. Now we can we can go on. Yes, that's great. So pleased to announce that 2.319.1 is released and with our change log. Thank you, Diraj. Thank you, Meg. Thank you to Kristen. Yay. Yay. <laughs> and the <laughs> next release is scheduled two weeks later than the typical time. It would okay. have ne normally fallen on December 29th. And uh -huh. December 29th is a time when I intend to be on vacation personally. It's my end of year holidays. And uh, yes. and others may be doing the same. Although Meg, you should be in holidays right now, right? Yeah, they are. They just ended. So oh, oh okay. It, it's a minor but, holiday, anyway. Right. It's it it's matter. not a high holiday, right? So right. Okay. Yeah. So right. okay. But the whole world goes on holiday, at least in the United States. Yeah. End of year is. So so, second week of January, second full week of January, we will deliver a new release of of Jenkins. All right. Um, any other news anyone else needs to share? Yes, I want to congratulate you for being in Jenkins doc, Jenkins government's governance board and being Jenkins documentation officer. So oh, oh yes, Mark. thank you. I did not know this. Congratulations, indeed. <laughs> yes. Well, I, okay. Shame on you, Meg, for not voting for me. <laughs> if you didn't know about it. Oh. That means you didn't vote for me in documentation officer. I apologize, and yet you won anyhow. Right, exactly. exactly. Astonishing. <laughs> so in, in the little community where I live, we just had an election for a, a person in our local government that was decided by literally one vote. Mm. Out of thousands of votes, <laughs> one vote was the difference between the two. So, so Meg, it's important that you wow. vote next year. 
it is. I <laughs> do apologize. Yeah. Uh, so the road, the the results blog was created by Gavin Mogan, and uh, yeah, it, it announced that. Thanks very much, Diraj. That's that's very kind of you. My pleasure. All, all right, ready for the next topic. Let's yes. go to, to review the pull request. So I have not looked at this at all. So this is completely unvarnished, un, unprepared looking. So a developer one that, all right, now we've got to make notes. So changes, changes after delivery, move the developer topic to the end of the list, okay. And that was 6014, 6014, okay. All right, then another one, 6000, also moved to the end and, okay, and this one, 6004, looks like it needs a, an, a hard stop and some additional work. All of them looks like they're developer category. So far, yeah. And so let's so far, yes. let's keep looking then. All right. So then um, let's make a fix to the one that we can. All right. New tab. GitHub core. Give me a pull request. Okay, so edit. Okay, so no, don't know. Okay, developer, disable form, element path and unit tests by default. And I don't know that that belongs in the in the change log or not, but I, I guess let's let's call it yes for now. What do you think? Because developers probably do care very much about it. This next one, I would propose we do a skip. JNR POSIX, patch revision, I don't think generally is worth mentioning. So I propose to declare it a skip change log. Okay. And let's see if there's any comment that said, nope. So I think they would not object. Good. All right. Next. Uh, nope. Okay. We did that one. Next is 5423. Deprecate fingerprint storage. Use the extension API instead. That seems reasonable. It needs to move to the developer section, but it's... Oh, oh, except we like to put the word developer colon at the front, don't we? Yeah. Okay, so and let's... This word, fingerprint storage, hashtag get file fingerprint storage. Do you want to highlight this or it looks like this only? It, it, that's a good point. It should be, uh, we probably should convert it so that it looks like Java code and looks like code mm -hmm. instead of instead of the it looks like a java doc reference there i mean we could we could either make it into a java doc reference or into a uh, into just code do you have a preference I kind of like there? a reference but we need to do extension api also yeah but i think uh well oh yeah good point right so but I, I like to say I like a link on those things myself. I just don't yeah, know. well, so let's 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 do it. Why don't we? I mean yes. it it seems reasonable and if we do it like this, Google will help us. Fingerprint storage and this. And the method that's being deprecated is get file fingerprint storage. Okay. Okay, developers should use the extension API instead. And now 
that one i'm not sure which extension api so let's see if we can find the extensions extensions all right no extension points okay here we go extension points defined in no see that's not i, I really want oh oh maybe it's in fingerprint storage extent fingerprint storage external fingerprint storage maybe whoops no no wait a sec i just made a mistake it was right there on the page this extension points defined in jenkins core ah. and here it is fingerprint storage so i think we could make it link to that Uh, and we'll have to check it with Daniel to be sure. That's another advantage though of links is because people get careless with terminology. And if you've got the link, you know you're right. Right, exactly. Okay, so um, everybody okay with that? And we'll have to check it with Daniel. It will need a separate edit later. Uh, add references for the fingerprint storage storage API deprecation. So this link should work, which it does, good. And this, oops, this link should work. It does, uh, yes, finally, okay, good. All right, mm -hmm. next, 6010, improve logging from abstract from termination of cloud agents. Okay, to me, that looks pretty good. Oh, except we don't use past tense. Ah. Right, it's supposed to be present right. tense. So. Okay. And which I would say logging for rather than logging from, is that just me? Okay. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Yeah. Okay, good. And then 5949, fix appearance of table tooltips. Okay, so... It needs a hard stop, but are there other things that should be changed there? Okay, so tooltips for build intro became a little janky. There were strange artifacts in the corners of the tooltips. So is this a regression? I th yeah, well, it, yeah, it's a regret. It's a change from the, yeah, so a regression from the what do you call it from the, the table changes? But if you look at it, I'm not sure I'm ready to highlight it as a regression. It's no, it's a, that takes a very fine eye to detect a difference there. Let's zoom in on that. Notice, notice when he says a little janky, it's really yeah. hard for my eye at least to see that there's any change there. Yes, I guess it's a little bit of a change. Okay, yeah. Uh, what kind of changes there? Even I'm not able to see. So if you look, he says there are strange artifacts in the corners and mm -hmm. borders between rows disappeared. And I think the strange artifact in the corners, if you look at this one, it's got mm -hmm. a different, where is it? I'm not sure I can get close enough to it. It's got a, a sort of a, a more white little bit section here. And this one has mm -hmm. an odd shape. And I think, I think that's what he means when he says a little janky. Hmm. <laughs> okay. I, I realize nice. that's a very precise technical term and you're, <laughs> you're all deeply impressed at my ability to pronounce that technical term. <laughs> Indeed. Definitely. Okay, great. All right, so fix appearance and then these others are all, let's make them big enough to read. Okay, so just scan through those with me to see if you see any that you think should be highlighted but aren't.
Yeah, these look these look like cleanup items for me. Dependency updates and cleanup items. So it's fine that they're not included. Uh, and what do you mean by these check style checks? Because there's a lot of them. Uh, so a check style check is a is a static analysis check that's configured to look at the formatting or the text of the source code. So check style mm -hmm. does a does a um, has some algorithmic sanity checks that it applies to to source code and there are things where it looks for instance this super clone is probably that when doing a clone we must call the super um, or if you've implemented finalize you must call supers finalize those those are the kind of hints that you get from check style huh mm -hmm. okay so these are these are just static and static analysis checks that can help the developers not inject things that might be questionable. Hmm. Okay. A good example of this, an easy one to understand is this unused imports. If I have an import statement in Java code, but never hmm. reference anything from it, there's no reason to have the import statement. Hmm. So it's like hmm. similar to the pilot package in Python. Yes, 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 in fact. In fact, it probably predates PyLint by a few years. So yes, but it's like PyLint. Awesome. That makes sense. It's also like, like for, for Megs and my um, uh, or origins, it's like the Lint command. Hmm. Yeah. Or if you're more recent, it's like GCC warn all or uh, CLANGs warn or there are all sorts of warning warning generators that will help you Try to write better code. Right. Hmm. That's great. Okay. Everybody okay with that so far? Yes. That's good. All right. Then let's ge regenerate it. And we do that by going to core and the actions. And here we say change log drafter go. All right. Okay, next topic then. So modernizing a plugin, the blog post and tutorial, let's spend, or are you okay if we spend some time there? Diraj and I had time during last week's Thursday office hours to talk about LTS and LTS processes. Are you okay if we take this topic, Diraj, or were there LTS related things that you wanted to discuss further? This topic is good. Yes, let's go with this. Okay, great. Okay, so one of the challenges was how do we make a prototype visible for others to review? And Gavin Mogan has offered a uh, offered DigitalOcean hosting of a uh, prototype site, if we want to use that. Mm -hmm. uh, I was Mark was just going to copy copy files to his, his web server for, for public web to my public web server. Uh, and I'm okay with either. Uh, Gavin's will probably take a little more effort, but would give us something that's much richer and could be used by multiple people. And you don't have to maintain it. Well, this, this will only list, live, the thing that I would do would only live for the duration of this pull request, right? So maybe another week or two. Right. Whereas what Gavin suggested might be usable for any pull request and give us a chance to see, see the pull requests and how they look. Which would be very nice. Yeah. So we need to decide between these two options, right? Or is it decided? Yeah, so, well, it's, I'm not sure it's, they're, they're not even music mutually exclusive. We could do both. The, the, mm. the thing here is if Gavin's willing to do it, that's, that's a very attractive long-term solution um, and can do this almost immediately, right? This is a few minutes work. So I think what we should say is let's just plan on plan on doing, I'm gonna plan on doing this one and we'll ask Gavin if he's willing to do the other one as well. Yes, sounds great. Okay. 
So where it will be is what I'd propose is we'll put it at home.markweight.net slash chill.mweight slash, and now I've got to go look to see where it's at. So here we go. Oh, wrong, wrong computer. Sorry, just a minute. There it is. Okay. Yep. Okay. So I propose to put it at that location. And right now that location is not useful. Oops. But it will be useful reasonably soon. So what it has is one file in it right now, but I'll put more. We'll just put the site there and see if that works. Cool. Okay. So the, the more important thing is, is show the two of you the kinds of things that are in the document now and some of the things that we've we've discovered while working through it, mistakes I've made, things like that, that are, are good things for us to be sure that we understand, particularly Diraj, as you and I are working together on this, we need to, I need to clarify the things where, oh, I made a mistake here, watch out for it. So the, the live stream videos are still very useful and highly effective. We absolutely want to embed those. The thing that I had done was I've added a number of additional ideas of things to be done. And some of them just don't make sense. So let's take a, as an example, this enable check style reporting. Um, is allowed, but notice this caveat here, check with the maintainer before enabling check style. The reason for that is check style is very noisy. Uh, default settings of, on check style are so noisy that they're useless. Ah. So it, it requires, requires a custom check style definition that the maintainer agrees is useful. Now, now you may say, well, but wait a sec, we just did this review of a bunch of pull requests. We saw a bunch of pull requests in Jenkins core that are using check style, right? We, that right. we just saw those and it mentions those. Mm. So how can it be that it's, and what's happening in core right now is mm -hmm. Basel Crow is adding one step at a time check style checks that let's let's find some here we go this one mm -hmm. and what he did is he added some source code changes and then if we look carefully we'll see he added an explicit very specific add this check exactly this one check Right. And, and that requires negotiation with the maintainer, right? So, oh. so putting this in, some, in a general place like this is just too, there's too much interaction with the maintainer for this to really mm -hmm. make sense here, right? Mm -hmm. we, could, we could, what I think we might do based on that is we might move it into the section on, um, what do you call it? After you've adopted it. Improve, right. Because after you've adopted the plugin, then yeah, it may make sense. You as an adopter may choose which check styles, check style reports you want to enable. Hmm. Right, makes sense. Okay. Because I was thinking that this, instead of the way it's currently written, it should be to create to whatever, enable this thing correctly before you call it. I'm, okay, I'm not sure what you Rather mean. Rather than there. you're saying don't use it unless you get with the maintainer. You know, in other words, um, define a custom check style definition or um, 
that the maintainer agrees on before using check style reporting or something like that. That's rough. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so uh, agree, decide with the maintainer, or maybe it's identify the useful subset yeah. of check style checks, of check style warnings that will help help the plugin without right. undue noise. And then we use that to say, hey, justify the fact that default settings are so noisy, they, they aren't helpful. Right. Now, do all maintainers know how to do this correctly? I mean, we've got a lot of new people stepping up and saying, I'll adopt that one. Yes. Do we tell, is there a place we can link that tells people how to do this? And and that's a that's a good hint. I would say maybe what we would use is location with um, examples of effective check style rules and of useful check style rules. And there I would point them right now, use Jenkins core as an example because right. it's where um, where Basil Crow has been doing example work. So let's put a, a hyperlink to it and we will just, that way we've got it. I don't know that that needs to go into the tutorial, but I think it's worth, you know, where would you've put check style? Dot check style, maybe. Okay, just a minute. Hmm. Okay, back to the pull request. Sorry, just a further minute. It is, oh, it's right in the POM file. Okay, good, even better. Yes, here we go. Now the challenge is I don't know how to search for that text in a hyperlink. Uh -huh. So we'll just make it a permalink for now. Okay. Okay. I mean, is it, typically with a tutorial, there's some place that's got more detailed information on corner cases that you can say for all the options go there. So maybe this is something, maybe we need a separate section on defining check styles or something. Yeah, well, or choosing but, which ones you'll use, right? Because right. what what this is saying, you'll see what this says here. It says, okay, here are the check style rules. We're going to do line length. For any file that ends with Java, we want lines to never exceed 240 characters uh -huh. and we'll ignore certain lines that are known to have tendency to be long. Right, right. But, but this is this is a, a useful example of, hey, here are some interesting check style rules that can help. Right. Yes. Okay. All right, so that was that was one thing that we learned from from Jean Marc's working through it was uh, I added this one as well, div based form layout conditionals. You remember, Diraj, that one of the things we did was, please update the base Jenkins version. Yes. And because we did that, and because we choose a version 2.289.1, which is after the tables to divs translation, it means plugins that had added this, these conditionals mm -hmm. for tables mm -hmm. to divs can now throw them away because they uh -huh. now say, I no longer have to even run on the, I can't run on versions older than this. And that means mm -hmm. everybody has tables to divs. So for instance, I remove these from the Git plugin. Okay. Yep. That makes sense. Now let's go back to some <coughs> others that are there. Um, 
oh, this one, this is another one that enable the project mess detector. It's um, PM, PMD. And it, it's again, one that is, it's like check style that its default settings are so noisy as to be unusable. But if you were to tune it, it could be, it could be useful. So this one also requires the person to interact with maintainer, right? Exactly. Yeah. So I moved it into this section because I, if, if I received a pull request enabling PMD on one of the plugins I maintain, I would most likely immediately close it and say, sorry, we, we should have had a discussion about which things matter and which things don't. Right. And, and because many of them, it would be, it, it is so noisy that it, it just, it's not useful. Yes. Then what else? Jeez. Okay. The others, I think so far we're seeing things that are okay. Oh, oh, okay. No, there is. Meg, you remember you remember She Code Africa? This one uh, is is a major area for work that hey, it it doesn't this text doesn't nearly describe well enough what um, what can be done to improve online help for pipeline. Online help in general, but especially for pipeline. The file naming patterns and the techniques to test online help after adding it. This is not generically pipeline documentation, though, is it? This is for the steps, specifically for the steps, right? Uh, good. Yes, very good. Yeah, that's a good, good clarification. Yes, Im improved pipeline step documentation. Yeah, very good. Yeah, good point. Thank you. Yeah. And, and the thing that was complicated for me was it's, it's by convention, the file names, the, the help is located based on, a, on the name of the class that's referring to it. And if you don't get that right and put it in the right place, it just won't be found. Right. Okay, so... Oh, and this is one that I had fun with. Oh, seriously, this was fun. But this is clearly after adoption. Okay, so there is a thing called the PIT mutation framework testing. What it is, is it's, it takes your tests, it takes your Java source code and modifies it so that it should cause your tests to fail. And then gives you a report telling you how well your you're tested at detecting the injected failures. Oh. And, and I think it is, if you've got something that is very mature with the, the very, very well covered with its test automation, this thing is the next level of, are you really as well tested as you think you are? Hmm. Doctor awesome. or Professor Uli Hoffner of the Technical University of Munich pointed this one but it's it's really this one is so advanced because the the plugin needs to have significant test coverage already enabled and i would put this very late like yeah like right there at best because it's so so exotic right All right. Well, so I think I've been through the ones that were on my mind. 
Giraj, were there any of these where you feel like, hey, you would like to take one or two of these and and describe them further? I I've got to get started writing on this again. I haven't touched my my commits for for weeks, and I need to get just make more progress. Yes, same here. So I don't have much question. So I just wanted to know that uh, you were mentioning this person, John, who pointed out these things like. So mm -hmm. is he related to Jenkins or, and how did he find out about this draft? Yeah, so Jean-Marc is, is a colleague of mine at CloudBees who is a new person in the team that I manage. He's doing developer relations and part of his ramp up is modernizing a plugin following these instructions. And so, so mm -hmm. he's, he's acting as our first test case. Oh, that's very nice. And uh, I also saw some other mentions of people who are going to review this draft, right? Somewhere. Right. Yeah. Well, I, and I keep I keep pointing people to this document, encouraging them to to give us pointers and give us help if they'd like. Okay, that's great. So other than that, I don't have much question. Uh, we'll work on it as soon as we get new things here, sure. Great, okay. And, and that's me is I've got, I've got uh, discussed the changes and what we've learned. I guess there is, there, there is one more thing that, well, I, it's, it's related. It is that sometimes when people read this document, they may think that this was from somebody who really knows what they're doing and everything in it is absolutely correct. And what Jean-Marc observed is not only is it not correct, many of the things are completely mistaken, right? <laughs> like the check style thing that I did. I had put it, put it as, as though, oh yeah, you should do this. And he looked at it and said, that's, that's crazy. We shouldn't enable check style because it's just not helpful. Unless you turn, mm -hmm. unless you intentionally tune it, it, it will actually hinder you rather than help you. Right. Right. I'm wondering about these things just structurally. These are like these long laundry lists of all sorts of good things. Mm -hmm. If it would be better to group them so you had, you know, they're kind of all over the place, but I, there's definitely, there's a lot that have to do with testing. There's a few that have to do with documentation. Right. And, and I don't, I mean, I don't know, cause I haven't done this. Maybe this laundry list works, but I'm thinking whether it would be nice to have you know, getting the testing right, and you could go into all these things. Yeah, and and I don't know if okay, this is a a private document that Jean Marc did. I'm hoping he won't mind that I show it to other people. He, I think he he he, he would agree strongly with your observation, Meg, that we should categorize these things better. Yeah, and so here are some categorizations that he used. He had a topic he called general. Uh -huh. And another one that's code quality checks that I might call static analysis. Okay. Another one that is code improvements. Another one that, and another section that is documentation. Let's see, let's get this view so that we're not in print layout. Okay. So documentation, another is configuration. Uh, I might, I might put one here as, yeah, see, I'm not sure. This one is that one. Yeah, well, see, these, these configuration things for me are special cases of. This mutation one has to be there. They're, the they're actually one. testing, aren't they? Yeah, I, I think in that case, mutation testing really isn't this kind of configuration. Now, now there's another category here, which I think would, would be the things you can do as a maintain things you can do as a contributor and things you can do as a maintainer and they may be different right for instance this one this one is maintainers only maintainer yeah you have to have after adoption not before because i can't imagine you've got enough tests in most of the jenkins mm -hmm. plugins to make that useful. Right. right. So can we scroll down? Sure. So there's already a section for maintainer. 
Uh, oh, yes. Oh, good. Right. Let's put it there. Very good. Thank you. So let's put that down there. So should the, um, the check stuff be under the maintainer? It should. Yes, absolutely. Because that's reporting. this one and this one both really are maintainer things. Right. And they're maintainer things because you got to decide what you actually want. So there was a comment on this previously said that opinions differ about this. Exactly. So, okay. So what is saying that this needs to be under maintainer or something else? That's the reason the reasons the opinions differ about it is because um, there are people who correctly say, don't you dare enable that on my on the thing I maintain. It's too noisy. I do not want to waste time addressing its non-useful reports. So that's why I would say that, but ideally all maintainers would define the stuff so that it is giving useful information. Well, or, or make it explicit. Don't, don't bother enabling it on this repository, right? Saying, look, mm -hmm. I've considered this thing. The Git plugin is one of those where I've considered check style and I would never main, never enable it. I just wouldn't. Right. So it actually should be either and make it so that, I mean, if somebody gets hit by a truck that the next day somebody knows it's not, you know, this person did not enable it for this reason. Right, <laughs> exactly. So, so. Or, um, or you need to, what did you call the thing that you do where you actually define the check style test that you want? Yeah, that's, that's where you, you define a custom check style definition. Yeah. yeah. See, I would like. I might say for this one, it should be define a custom check style definition or do not use check style. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That would, yeah. See, I think, I think Jesse, Jesse Glick's argument was, Hey, he's not even sure that people should bother using check style. Okay. And, and, and I think it's a valid, it's a valid concern because there are things that can be quite wasteful in the output. If you have to, if you waste time worrying about code formatting that is irrelevant to you as a maintainer, you, you've spent time on something that didn't help you. So that's why you should, and then why can't I retain that for, you should define anything you want checked for by check style or that you don't want it used for this. Right. And where should I, def and if I want to say I don't do, like for you, Mark, if I looked at the uh, Git plugin, where would I know that you had deliberately decided not to use this? Right. So that's where that's where declaring the contributing guide Good. that check style is not being used, is intentionally not being used. Right. And maybe what that is is uh, list the static analysis that is used and uh, note the static analysis that is intentionally not used. Right. Oh, oh, and now that you remind me, there's there's one more thing which we should have put in there and I never did. And we've got a video on it and everything. It is, um, this is a whole new thing which is, Enable find sec bugs, which is a spot bugs extension. Enable find sec bugs. Enable spot bugs extension. Find sec bugs. And then it's see the video that Jeff Thompson did, created to show how to enable find sec bugs for additional spot bugs static analysis. That is security specific.
And let's get a link to that. Jenkins, find sec bugs, Jeff Thompson, video. There we go. See, you knew that was easy. In your hands, yes. There we go. But that's, that's again, a place where we could embed this into the page. And it, it's a 40 minute video on the strengths and weaknesses of fine sec bugs. Right. How to enable it. Right. All right. Now Any this, this, this task of man, maintainers list is getting long too, like that needs subdividing. Sorry, which maintainers list is that? Oh, on the one that you had on that you, I guess that's from John Mark's list. Uh huh. Or something, but. Oh, right. Well, and and this one might be might be subsetted again into the kinds of you know documentation versus so right. release drafter is really a documentation thing. Mm -hmm. uh, we might call topics, labels, and label assignment as sort of pull request automation. Mm -hmm. And then this one is security. These are static analysis. Plugin security checklist. Yeah. Can, yeah. So it, it would, it might be possible to break these also into, into topics. Yeah. In this, in this categories. Good. Right. Cause it's, I mean, I look at this and I, it's sort of confusing cause it's just all these individual parts. There's nothing that puts them together. And, and does using it and categories like this, does that help you better? I think, there... it, I think it does. I mean, it's, it's, it puts it there and then you write into it, of course. Okay. But, uh, uh, to me, So, do are we going to make two different blog posts for the first part and for the maintenance part, or it's going to be as we decided in one blog post only? Oh, that's a good good question. Yeah, it may be that what we say is we should. That's a very good idea. If we said, hey, let's do the con we if we focused our efforts first on the contributor section, and admitted that the maintainer thing will come later. Uh huh. Okay. That would get us content faster and a subset of the content that's still useful right it's right. also a good thing for us to have as we enter google season google summer of code because these are the kinds of things that google summer of code students could jump right into and say yeah i'm going to do this as a way to to become familiar with the community mm. uh -huh. exactly you know a, a um, google summer of code student could adopt a plugin and make these changes as their way of introducing themselves to the community. Yes, even even I tried that blog post uh, where we interact with the plugin. Uh, right. Make a plugin with hello he hello world, right? Right. That one. So this would definitely be very helpful to them. Good. Very good. Okay. Um, that first one under documentation is that complete? I mean, if I'm if I make my doc if I put my documentation in the README of my source code, I have my documentations under GitHub. There's there's more to it than that. So I figured there was, but but I mean, but it's there, not not a lot more. So what it is is you you take you need to do two steps, and the uh, two steps are described here. The first is what you do is you. Where is it? You create the documentation. Where is the mention of palm.x? Oh, that's shameful. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay, so this needs fixing. Um, this page only tells half the story. Uh, so this talks about how you migrate it. That's, there's got to be another page that talks about And it about should be to the GitHub repository where the plugin code is, correct? It is. That's correct. Yes. And so, hmm, okay, just a minute. Okay, come on. 
the word document occurs. Oops, oops, there was one right there. I saw it. that's it. This one is the one that I wanted. Yes, okay. This is the better choice because it describes how you do it in order to, uh -huh. to make the thing work. Right. So that, that page that we were at earlier is, is imperfect at best. This is the one that, let's edit this and correct that. So what it says is <clears throat> using GitHub as, as documentation source, you create a readme, you modify the project URL in the GitHub repository. And uh -huh. that is, is a crucial thing. And then you release the plugin. And it takes all three steps before you've made the conversion. All right. So that other document, should it just have, lose a whole lot of text and say, follow the instructions over here? Yeah, well, this plugin wiki pages is describing this thing needs a complete rework because the this Jenkins wiki exporter is no longer useful because uh -huh. the Jenkins the Jenkins wiki is gone. There's nothing to export anymore. Oh, okay, yes, okay. And so, so this page, and maybe what we just should just do is report an issue for this page. Okay, plugin wiki pages page uh, describes non. Uh, outdated steps the the page describes wiki conversion that is no longer necessary no longer available and in many cases no longer necessary needs to describe how to use the archive site how to use the Jenkins wiki docs, docs archive site and the Jenkins wiki read on uh, static HTML site. No screenshots to offer and okay. Agreeable? Yes. Yes. Okay. So when we open this page, it says, yeah, good. Okay. And then here's the reference down below. That's still a useful one. And this one is just a link to the exporter itself that Gavin's eventually going to turn off because it, it really isn't, it doesn't have any source to convert any longer. Hmm. Right. So I could, you know, if I if I paste a URL to the con the Jenkins wiki here, it will just fail if I remember correctly. Good, nice catch. Okay. Oh, we have hit our time. I sorry for being so blathering on here. Any other oh, topics no, we no. should dis discuss here today? No, nothing from my right. side. Yeah. Okay, continue. Oh, actually, let me make a note here. That was an important thing that you noted is uh, plan to publish in two phases. Contributor topics, maintainer topics. Seem reasonable? Right. Yes. Because yeah. that, that lets us get the content out sooner and let's Diraj and I both focus on the early things for first first intentional work. Right. Hmm. Do we want to mention exactly. the desire to get this completed for before the summer? Yeah, yeah. I want to complete it before. Be. I want to complete the first phase before end of December. Okay. Yeah. So you're going on holidays, so that would be before Christmas, right? Correct. That's right. So before December twenty-five. Yes, absolutely. Hmm. That's nice. That's nice. Yeah, that's that's maybe a stretch. <laughs> that may be a stretch objective. It's yeah. admittedly 
I'm, I am notoriously <laughs> optimistic about how much I think I can get done when reality is much harsher. Yeah, please take it. I didn't mean it that way. <laughs> no, no, that's great. All right. Anything else we should discuss today? No, nothing from my side. Yep. Good meeting. Thank you very much to everyone. Uh, Thank recording you. Recording will be available later. Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.